Hello and welcome to another council comments. We are joined by Greg Farrell and he is our Ward 4 council member and I want to congratulate you on another term. Well thank you and I thank the citizens of Ward 4 as well yeah, for allowing me to have another term. Yes, very exciting. Now there are some meeting changes I guess new council everything's changing a little bit tell us when the new council meetings will be okay it's beginning uh, january 11th uh our meetings right now are the first and sec and first and third mondays they will now go to the second and fourth mondays of each month beginning january 11th that they begin at seven o'clock we have our pre-meetings at six o'clock and they are open to the public okay so if anyone would like to come you are able to come I think it's worth mentioning too, you guys also do work sessions um, during the week where where it's really hashed out what's on these agendas, right? That's correct. Usually they are the Thursday before the council meeting on Monday and okay. that's really where we do a lot of our work. They start at six o'clock, we get out normally around 8.30, 9 o'clock and that's yeah. where we hash out everything. Do we want to bring it up? And where we get all the information for the upcoming items that will be put yes. on the agenda on Mondays. Yes, so that then when we do have the council meetings, they can seem maybe to run quickly, but right. it's because you have <coughs> put that work That's ahead correct, of time. yes. Okay, very good to know. Now, there were some, we put in a grant application for maybe some road updates. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, we the city applied for the rebuild grant comes up every year and we chose to apply for uh, the resurfacing of uh, Alabaster Boulevard that runs behind the uh, promenade that yes. needs a lot of work. Yes. Um, it's a 50-50 match. We'll hopefully know sometime first quarter of uh, 2021 and hopefully we will get it and we can uh, begin that project because it's really needed. It's really needed. I think all of us heading to Westwood Baptist Church or Ballantrae yeah. or Weatherly <laughs> uh, on that roller coaster of a road will be very thankful for that. Yeah. So when, when did you say we would hear that? Hopefully back? first quarter of 2021. Cool. So. All right. Well, that's exciting. All right. Now, um, we've talked about a new ladder truck for the fire department before, and um, you being a retired firefighter here, we, we like to hear your perspective on things. Um, they're getting some new equipment for that truck, right? Yeah, we approved um, two sets of items. One is uh, uh, batterized rescue um, equipment. This is equipment that's used to uh, for extrication in yes. uh, vehicle accidents and also the actual equipment that's needed for the truck like the hose all the appliances and everything that's needed for the ladder truck so we went ahead and proved that so we can get it in there because the truck is still slated to be here um, sometime in uh, later march awesome. probably put in service april may wonderful well that's exciting for the fire department i know we always <coughs> want their equipment to be oh, yeah. <laughs> top notch because when we need them we need them right yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, one thing too I wanted to talk about um, with the first responders is the police department getting, they're getting about six new Tahoes I think? Yes, we approved in their capital plan six more uh, Chevrolet Tahoes, but there's a slight change. The manufacturer quit making the current color, oh. so we are going back to the true um, black and white. Okay. It'll be a black Tahoe with white panels on the doors and black lettering. Because so, they're no longer making no, the silver. So we, so now we're going back to the black and white vehicle colors. Okay. So all right. Be a big change coming. So look out for <laughs> yeah. the black and white for sure. <laughs> That's right. right. Um, so let's talk uh, too about the the teen council. They do such a good job in our community. It's the teen council is growing. They, it's just such a great outlet for them as young people. Um, you guys are gonna put a position kind of over them? Yeah, um, they are, the Teen Council is vital to our community. They do tremendous work with the youth and we're very grateful for them. And uh, Mayor Brakefield came to us and asked us to create a part-time position so he could put somebody in charge of that to okay. guide them and to lead them. And uh, so it's a unanimous decision. We agreed that it's a vital position. Yeah. So it'll be a part-time position and that person will um, be the head lead of the teen council or help them organize things, watch over them, okay. and just make it continuously to grow for our community. So more to come on that when, right. when we select the person, but I'm, I think that we need to uh, 
we need to talk with the teen council. It's been a while, and I think they've got lots going on right now that we need we need to hear about. Yeah, and it's a challenging time for them with yes. with the yes. uh, COVID environment. So it's it's a challenge of, of you know some things that they can do and can't do right now. So they're creative though. They can oh, yeah. think outside that box. Yeah. It's a sure. good group. Yes, it is. All right, now let's talk about the CARES Act. The city was given some money through the CARES Act, right? Yeah, this is the federal money that was handed down to the states. Um, and this, the city applied for several things through the CARES Act. Uh, one item was the CPR mechanical devices for the fire department. Yes. Um, those were purchased through this act. And then also to upgrade all their IT they needed new computers and iPads for on-scene stuff to do while well, medical calls. They can do everything yes. electronically. And then at City Hall, we are upgrading all of our locks to be touchless locks to help nice. with um, security and so people aren't always touching things. Yeah. So that'll help. And it's about $100,000 and it is no cost to the city whatsoever. It's 100% uh, reimbursable to the city. So it's a, you know, the money had to be spent. Yeah. And so we applied for these grants and we were awarded them. Wonderful. That's great for the city, I know. Well, lots going on, lots of things constantly changing in our COVID environment, oh, yeah. but we are <laughs> approaching 2021. So let's, let's hopefully hope. it'll be a better year. That's let's what we're looking for. A for. Breather. <laughs> yes, for sure. I'm so glad that you came and spoke with us today. I appreciate it. And we'll see you in a few months again. And thank right? you for the opportunity. You love doing it. Thank you, Greg. All right, guys, we'll see you next month on council comments brought to you by the city of Alabaster. Mm -hmm.